All right, good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time or day it is for you. Um, this is another block bench modeling tutorial. I'm Super Fuzzy Goat from Digimobs. Most of you who are watching this are probably here because of Digimobs. Um, and if you are, you know I've been promising to make this tutorial for a few days, so here we go. If you're not here from Digimobs, you are on a real deep dive into YouTube tutorials, so um, congrats, congrats on finding this. This tutorial is going to be showing off how I did Cordramon's wings. So Cordramon is this green guy right here. He has an alternate skin, which is blue. I'm going to be using the green one just because I like the color a little better. They're both the same, it doesn't matter. So as for the wings, if you look at them, you'll notice they're mostly flat, but they're not quite flat. And that's because um, I've broken them up into a few little pieces. The older Cordramon model had wings that were all one piece. Those were fine, there was nothing wrong with them. Um, they flapped up and down, kind of like bees' wings. But larger animals, like eagles or hawks or anything big that can fly, they tend to fly a little more dramatically. They take longer, slower flaps. And as you can see in this um, image here, which I do not own the rights to, I'll cite it in the comments. As you can see in this image here, their wings move um, a little more than just up and down as they fly. So for Cordramon, I tried to make a simplified version of that for its animations, which we can see in its, where is it? In its flying animation. So if I play that, you'll see the wings, um, they curve down a little bit in the downstrokes, and they also fold and unfold as it flies. It's not just a straight up and down. And to do that, I had to break the wings up into a few pieces. I'm not actually going to make the wings here because I'm trying to make shorter videos, um, but I will go over the different pieces of the wings. So over here, it doesn't matter too much what you name the wings with the current block bench iteration. Um, if you have your left wing named left wing and your right wing named right wing, you can use this handy button here, the flip animation button, and it will apply the exact same animation flipped to the right as to the left, left wing one, right wing one, and so on. Back to our edit. So we have our left wing, and we have it broken up into a few bones. The first one, which has its pivot point right here on the shoulder, is the main wing bone. I'm gonna hide the rest of them for now. So you can see um, it's just the start of the wing. Um, it's got this bulge here, which is just representing the muscle. I'm not going to go over how I did that right now, but I have made a video um, showing how I do these kind of curvy but still basically square shapes. I will link it if I can figure out how. If not, um, I'm sure you can find it. It's also got a little bit of a little bit of the wing flat here, not a whole bunch, just a little bit attached to it. Um, so that's the first piece. Um, when it flies, back to this one, we've got the left wing one piece, just minus 40 in the X, then it goes to minus 5, 30, and plus 5. So you can see it's moving not just in one direction, but in all three directions, um, just a little bit, but it, it gets you that kind of circular motion to the flight that's a little bit more accurate to how larger animals fly in the actual physical world that um, most of my references are taken from. So again, down and forward, up, fold back a little bit, and then back to the top. So that's the first bone. Uh, so left wing two actually just has this one bone on it, or this one block on the bone, and that's because it is just this piece. For my dragon wings, I tend to use bat wings as references. Bat wings, if you look at this image here, um, they're kind of like hands if you use your imagination. They've got the upper arm, the elbow, which on my Cordramon is the joint between wing one and wing two right here. And then they've got the hand. The palm is where all these little finger bones fan out from. Um, you'll notice on my Cordramon, the finger bones don't fan out from this one point. Um, that is because it is, that's how it looks in the reference image. 
we don't know how dragons would work, so I've just gone with the reference image for that. I'm not here to anatomically correct fantasy dragons. Um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get the joints as kind of workable as possible within this reference image. So we have left wing one, left wing two. Um, now, if you look at my rotations, just when it's at a standstill, you'll notice that left wing two isn't just bent in this direction. It's actually bent a little bit along the green and the blue, the Y and the Z axes as well. And that's what gives the, the wings this kind of flared out look. You'll see on the wing, I haven't collapsed. Um, there is a bit of an overlap here. Honestly, that's fine. As long as it looks clean and the clipping isn't weird, that's okay. When it flies, left wing two, I don't actually need to see the position or the scale because I'm not changing those. Left wing two um, starts, it actually starts bent a little bit forward and that's because the wing is kind of reaching forward. As it moves more forward, you'll see it actually straightens out here. And that's because the wing is as extended as kind of well, as extended as looked nice when I was doing it, but you want to extend it forward as it comes down. That joint bends down a little bit more, and you can see the Y and the Z rotations are changing over here. It comes back up, um, and it more or less straightens out, and then back to the top, and we start over. Um, having it bend in not just one direction, but in in three just gives it kind of a little more depth to the animation. It makes it seem a little more realistic. Okay, we're not painting. All right, so that is left wing two. Left wing three is this top bone. So left wing three is one of those finger bones on the on the bat reference, bat wing reference that I showed. It's got, it doesn't have the whole membrane attached to it, but it's got a piece of it. Um, if I show you left wing four, you'll notice that those two kind of sheets of membrane actually overlap. And that is because if I wanted to, I could extend this one out a little bit and have the wing a little more stretched out without opening up a gap. Um, we're going to put it back where it was for now. And we're going to go back to the animate tab. Alright, so wing three and four. They are both collapsed back just a little bit here because the wing is a little folded in the upward position. They extend out and you'll see left wing three actually folds down a little bit too. And that's just to get that curve of the wing as it moves down. At, <clears throat> sorry, towards the end I'm going to do a comparison of the left and the right wing one with movement in all three directions and one with just folding and unfolding and hopefully that'll give you an idea of why I'm um, making these joints move in more than one direction. Now it looks it looks nice, it looks clean. If you zoom in and you look really closely you'll notice that there is a little clipping. Um, you can't get rid of it. If you wanted to, you could line up the blocks perfectly so that when you unfolded the wing to a specific angle, um, there would be no clipping and they would meet up perfectly, but the wing doesn't go from open to closed all at once. It unfolds, so even if you do that, there is going to be a little bit of clipping in these between frames. Um, you just want to make sure that um, your angles are meeting up so that the the two halves of the membrane overlap. Over here you'll see I have 5.5 in the Z rotation even though I'm not really rotating it that way if I remove it. Um, we have that which doesn't look so nice um, so I just rotated the Z a little bit to compensate for that and to close it up. Okay we continue our down sweep. Left wing 3 is still bent down a little bit now left wing four, I'm not doing any of that with. It's just the top finger of the wing that I'm bending sideways. And that's because this part of the membrane is lined up with bone, um, the bone of wing two, which doesn't bend. 
Um, four does bend along the red, the x-axis, to allow the wing to fold and unfold. You see here as it comes back a little way, the wing is folding up a little bit, but that's all. Um, back to edit, and we'll just quickly touch on left wing five. It's basically the same as left wing four. It would really help if I could find it on my model tree. Um, so it's basically the same as left wing four. Um, it needs to be able to overlap with the membrane on wing one. Again, you have a little bit of a little bit of uneven overlap, but you can't get rid of that even if you position your blocks perfectly to compensate for it when it's at its most open. It's still going to clip when it's folding and unfolding. So you just want to get that as smooth as possible. So with all of them showing again the flying animation down sweep and the up sweep and you'll see they're unfolding and refolding just a little bit. I'm going to show you the sitting animation too because the wings are folded up a little bit in this one. You can see um, they're not super folded. That's because the membrane would clip through each other and it would show. Um, also if I folded it up too much it would get rid of these little holes in the wing which are um, on all the reference images so I wanted to keep um, but I did my best, and that's what matters. And they fold, and as the sitting animation plays, they fold and unfold just a little bit, which gives it that, that semblance of life. Now, going back to that reference image that I showed of the eagle flying, you'll see there are a lot of frames in this. I'm just using four. Um, it's the same with my walking animations. If you Google animations for walking, you'll see, you know, 10, 12 reference frames. I'm just using four. That's, in my opinion, that's all you really need. Um, it's Minecraft and Digimon. No matter what you do, it's not going to be hyper realistic. You just want them to look like they're existing in the space, as opposed to just kind of, you know, floundering aimlessly. Um, so four reference, or four um, keyframes is fine. That's all you need. Now, one more thing before we get to the final wing comparison. Um, again, if you're here from Digimobs, you'll know that I have been trying to figure out these flat blocks. Um, if you're not, you can probably still use this. So flat blocks um, have been present in Minecraft as long as I've been playing it. Grass textures use them. They're just two crossed flat blocks. Um, fire uses them as well. So does wheat. But we're using Blockbench, and in Blockbench, the renderer has a little bit of trouble with flat blocks. Um, if you only paint on one side, the texture is only visible from one side. If you paint on both sides, um, the renderer tries to shade both sides at once, and it looks real weird in-game. Um, I only know that because some of my models have been put in-game, and then we've noticed. You can't really see it in Blockbench itself. So, um, after a lot of trial and error, to combat that, I have come up with this. So these look like flat blocks, but if we zoom way, way in, you'll notice there are actually two flat blocks right next to each other. And that's because one of these very close together blocks has the texture on one side, and one has it on the other side. Um, to the paint tab, I'm just going to pick a random color for reference. So the best way to tell, um, well, first off, these blocks are, they're flat along the x-axis and their dimensions are along the y and z-axis, which means I can flip the texture on them, which is quite convenient. Um, if that doesn't happen to work with your model, that's fine. You'll just have to um, copy the texture onto, an, onto the block again on another part of the texture map, and you'll have two um, two identical parts of the texture map but just flipped. So if you look at the texture map, um, if you see this little bit that's right, lighting up red, this is the wing block that I have selected. Um, all the texture is on one side, the other side is just blank. I'm just going to move it out so we can see it. Um, if you are having trouble telling which side of your block the texture is on, the best way to do, the best way to do it is to go to connected colors which will just color 
kind of the block of color on that face that's all the same. So if I click that, it paints it all red, so I know that there isn't actually any texture on that side. And if you look towards the other flat block that we didn't move, you'll notice that only the holes have filled in red, which means the far side has been colored red, and the side facing towards us is white, which is the opposite of this block that we've moved and are experimenting with. Undo it, and I flip to the other side, and I click the white again. Um, now it's showing up dots because I've added noise in another program. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you can see because it's painting the connected colors and it's not painting the clear parts, the texture actually exists on this side of the block. Undo that because we don't actually want that. So that's this block. It has texture only on this side. This one is the same block. I copied it. I moved it along um, along the red, the x-axis, by, what was it, 0 0.01. Um, if you're doing this, I would recommend moving by 0 0.01. Um, I know that the, the position, the numerical values for the position over here go up to four decimal points, but if you're moving it by the third decimal point or the fourth decimal point, you will still get a little bit of clipping just because of how close together those blocks are and you know the renderer can only do so much. So I would recommend moving it by 0.01. Now it doesn't actually matter if the two textures are facing outwards away from each other or facing inwards towards each other because these, the opposite block is going to be clear from the other direction so they're still going to show up. Um, so now the final thing I want to touch on in this video is why I have the wings moving in two directions or three directions to close those little gaps instead of just one. So we are going to pull up left wing one, two, and three. Uh, two and three are the only ones we're going to change because four and five don't move um, except along the red x-axis. But we still And we still want the left wing one moving up and down. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to clear the Y and Z rotations. There. The right wing here moves in two directions and the left wing only moves in one. So looking at it from the front, you can see quite a bit of difference, even though it wasn't actually rotated that much. It just looks smoother and more like it's existing in, um, in a 3D space. From the side, it doesn't look that different because it's still reaching forward and reaching back. But from the front, in my opinion at least, it is a pretty big difference. Alright, so that's it for me. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, I will try and find an answer for you. Uh, hopefully this helps, and have a great day!